Hey guys, welcome back to RBR, and look what I have in front of me. The most fearful, yet most exciting AMG modern release. No time to waste. Let's take the covers off the new C63. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see what AMG have done to the new C63. Predictably, in a very AMG silver, this is your new C63S e-performance. And to be honest, it looks a pretty exciting looking beast. So guys, let's take this in a little bit. This is quite nice. When you back away a little bit, you kind of get an idea of how different the front end is. Everything from A pillar onwards is different. And then as you come kind of to the front, you start to get the width of the vehicle where the C63S, of course, that much wider, the bonnet is slightly longer than the normal C-Class or the C43. So it's 50 millimeters longer on the front. The width of the car is about 73 millimeters wider so we've got the nice big arches it's really quite lovely look at that look at the arches then of course the front end your typical amg grill of course and the huge jet wing design here we've got aerodynamic package on this car so massive front splitter at the bottom big openings here with your air panel but the coolest thing on the front end is look at that they finally added something we've been asking for ages it's the beautiful afalto about crest on the front which looks so cool and then you begin to see the details the lovely look at this Never had this on a C63 before. This is an air outlet to make sure the engine, which is pumping out almost, a, in fact, the same horsepower as my SL55 from a four-cylinder engine. It's amazing. We'll talk more about that later. You've got the huge bonnet domes here, which are very C63, and they link nicely into that air outlet here. I love that. That looks great. It's, the last time we had that was SLS Black Series. Okay, so that's cool. Then we have the wider arches. You can see much increased in their size on top of our lovely forged wheels here. You've got this design on the side, which is very much like GT four door actually, but with some cuts, I think it's actually designed better than that. We come around the side, get a bit of a side view of this car. It looks great. Nice extended side sills here in carbon fiber, carbon fiber mirrors, 20 inch wheels all around. Not had that on C63 before. So that's great. Gives it a really nice stance. And then as we come around the rear, this is the one thing I'm disappointed about. We haven't got wide arches that we were all hoping, okay, we lose the V8, maybe they'll go a bit crazy on the rear end, but they haven't. But we have got the usual flavor of a unique diffuser with the aerodynamic elements. This is of course aerodynamic package. So you've got the flicks on each side and you've got the extended lower diffuser flap here, which comes across all of them in fact. And then the nice large ribbed exhaust pipes, which you can see there looking really good. This is night package. So we've got the black chrome lettering here. And C63S now gets red writing for its badge. This is denoting the fact that it's an e-performance model of C63, just like we had in the GT63S. And you've got a large spoiler here on the back, again, looking quite nice with the air cut in the middle of it, what I used to call the devil horn spoiler. So all in all, really, it's looking like quite a mature update to the 205 saloon. Nothing groundbreaking in that sense, but this is your new C63. Big name for a car that's big on changes, huge changes. Tech coming in from AMG1, tech coming in from F1. Bye bye goes our V8, and in comes a new hybrid system linked with the four cylinder that I think we're gonna see on a lot of cars in Mercedes AMG's future, okay? So this is really important that AMG get this right. Of course, customers were terrified as we were when we went from the 6.2 to the four liter. So much to tell you in terms of what they've done under the skin and of course i'm the best guy to tell you about that so let's dive in today let's check out every single detail under the skin and on top of it of the new c63s i'll show you the saloon i'll show you a bit of the wagon we'll check out the interior so let's do it let's check out this the brand new c63s e-performance So guys, today's episode of RBR has been kindly sponsored by HelloFresh. It's an amazing service that's a monthly subscription that delivers fresh meals to you directly. It's not easy always eating healthy, getting all the ingredients you want, keeping them fresh, etc. HelloFresh makes all of that super easy. And the way you set it up is so simple. You just go to the HelloFresh website. You can first choose what types of meals you want. So for me, I want more fish and veggie stuff. Then you say the frequency per week, etc. And that's pretty much it. After that, they send you this lovely box 
and it's packaged so fantastically well. And they even have ice to keep it all as fresh as possible. How cool is that? You get these really nicely made menu cards which make everything simple. So, so for example, today I'm gonna to be making this roasted salmon dish and you can see at the top, it's labeled with three zero. So I go in my box and I find the right recipe. And there you go, three zero, labeled really nicely. And on the back of this, all the instructions. What I love about HelloFresh is you get all the ingredients all freshly delivered to you. So you cook it yourself. It's not like you're getting pre-prepared meals. You are the one who decides what your meal is like, what ingredients you add, whether you add less of something, more of something else, add your own twist to it. And I love that. Plus, we all hate how difficult it is to actually eat healthily. It's difficult to buy the stuff. It's difficult to keep it all stocked. HelloFresh does that all for you. All the headaches taken out of it. The end result is perfect and it tastes fantastic. So guys, as RBR viewers, of course, you get a great discount. All you have to do is use the code RBR and you get the offer that you can see on the screen there. And there's a link in the description below to use as well. Huge thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. Now, back to the episode. I know what you're thinking, guys. Scary times, scary times. I'm with you, okay? I have owned 11 C63s. I'm just awaiting my 12th one. I'm not flexing. I am a little bit. But I'm telling you guys how important the C63 is to me personally, on a personal level, forget the fact that I'm being a car journal for you today. For me, this car is really important, okay? The badge is really important. So they need to get it right, as far as I'm concerned. I love the look of it. If we talk about looks to begin with, I think they've really nailed that front end. And I think it looks like a really aggressive AMG saloon. And it kind of, to me, it looks a bit like GT63S, just condensed which is interesting because it weighs about the same as the GT63S. Yeah. Why does it weigh the same as the GT63S? Because of all the technology that's gone into this. So let's actually peel back the skin and start talking about what is under here. Before I do that, just a quick note on where, why we are where we are today. We're here because the C63 was basically too popular. The C-Class is too popular. And Mercedes needed to bring down their fleet emissions and they had to create a car that was creating less emissions for our planet. That's why we're here. Mercedes AMG have had to work with this idea of a smaller engine. So what they've done is they've taken as much as they could from their learning from the AMG one and brought it into the C63. Yes, it have, has four cylinders, but let's be honest, these guys are the best people in the world to give you a performance four cylinder engine. They knocked it out of the park with the original A45 being the most powerful production four cylinder. They did it again with the A45S at 421 brake horsepower, again being the most powerful, and they've done it again here today. So in this car, we have the engine that began its life in the A45S being the most powerful at 421. Now it's longitudinally turned and it's got the MGUH electric turbocharger which is the tech straight out of AMG one, okay? But you have this similar setup in the C43 as well, where it's making, you know, 400 brake horsepower. But in this car, that electric gas turbocharger is a different unit. It's actually larger. It's running on the 400 volt system that this car has rather than the 48 volt. So it's pumping out even more power. 476 brake horsepower out of a simple four cylinder combustion engine. That's the same horsepower basically that my SL55 is giving in its lovely four liter V8. That by itself, is impressive to me, okay? That electric gas turbocharger makes this car feel more naturally aspirated. That's why it doesn't need a twin turbo. Um, the torque curve is, you know, very, the, it's a, the immediate power that you get from this engine that is going to be very impressive. And we saw a lot of that in the 43. So just your combustion engine is giving you that massive amount of power. The rest comes from the rear. And this is the P3 hybrid system that we've been talking so much about in recent months and other videos. This again has brought learning from AMG One, from F1, and from all the things that AMG are planning in the future. What does it have? On the back, we have a 6.1 kilowatt AMG performance battery, just like the AMG One. 560 cells, all individually cooled. This is really clever stuff what AMG have done. Normally, batteries are cooled as a whole, but here the cells are cooled individually, which makes them even better in terms of providing power and then charging back up. It's damn clever. Okay, and again, all from Formula One. So that sits in the back. It's a small battery, but it's really useful in terms of what it does for this car. And we'll explore more of that in the future. There is a co-drive coming up as well. Underneath that, we have a very intelligent unit, which is called the EDU. And this houses three really important things. 
it houses your electric motor, which is a permanently synchronous, permanently excited electric motor, which sits on our rear axle. We also have a two-speed transmission dedicated to that for higher speeds, for launch control, etc., etc. And then finally, our limited slip differential, all of that in one unit sitting together with the batteries. What that means is that not only does that system provide a load more power to support our combustion engine, it also gives us an EV-only mode in the C63. How cool is that? But the power that it gives, it's impressive. It gives us 204 brake horsepower, additionally to that 476, which means we've got an output in this car of 680 brake horsepower. That's damn impressive. And the cool thing that they've done in this car is, as you go through the driving modes, you get different ranges of power throughout it, but you can access that full 680 on the overboost function anytime that you use the kick down as well. So it's not like it's hidden within race mode or something. So this is, this is impressive stuff, right? So that EDU on the back, that whole pre-3 system, really impressive. What is the power output though? That system on the back gives continuous power of around about 95 brake horsepower to support the engine. So we've got around about 570 brake all the time. But when you do kick down or use the boost function in race mode, then you get the full 200 for 10 seconds, which brings it up to 680. Why is it 10 seconds? Again, this is something I'm gonna cover thoroughly in the co-drive, which is coming up in the future at some point. So keep an eye out for that. So generally you've got 570 brake, and then when you need it, you've got up to 680, which is insane. Torque is 1,020 Newton meters, which is huge, okay? And then we've got a zero to 60 claimed of 3.4, which is identical between saloon and wagon, which is damn impressive considering something like the M3 Touring is slower than the saloon and way more heavier than our wagon is compared to the saloon here as well. So that's really good stats. All of that power goes to AMG's formatic system. So this is our first ever all wheel drive C63. We had a bit of a glimpse of that with the GLC 63 in the past, where it was, you know, it was very much a four by four C63, wasn't it? Um, but this is our first official C63 formatic. So we've got the all wheel drive system, fully variable so you can have all of the power going to the rear or you can engage drift mode of course and then everything decouples and you get the full 68 680 brake horsepower going to the rear which is which is damn cool right the downside is my god versus the c43 which weighs in at about 1750 kg this is 2111 kg okay you know, that is a 350 plus kg hike over both the C43 and the previous gen C63S. The benefit is we've got less weight on the front, 45 kg less across our front axle because we haven't got the heavier V8. But all of that does go to the rear, perhaps sitting lower, so maybe helping with handling. We will see in the future. But it's a big task for the dynamic engineers at AMG to get this right. Um, let's hope that they have. And in lieu of that, let's talk a little bit about what they've done under the skin to manage the weight and the rest of this car. Right, now let's talk about the chassis and what's under the skin. Let's take the C43 as our basis and everything from here then has been upgraded because of course, much more powerful car, much heavier car, you can have that much more stresses into it going into a corner and out of a corner, etc. So it needs to have the hardware to deal with it. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a roly-poly machine. So what have they done? First of all, we have a completely new front axle. We've got a completely new rear subframe. We've got even further stiffer struts. We've got new bushings. We've got new steering knuckles. We've got new struts that go from our front to the middle of the car and from the rear to the middle of the car as well. And they've taken advantage of the battery position and put a nice strut at the back there to give even more rigidity as well which is good, it's clever, it's making use of the fact that you have to have the battery there and normally you wouldn't be able to put a strut there because of the boot, but they've done it and obviously that's gonna help massively with rigidity. Of course, you've still got the strut across the engine bay here between the two suspension points. You've got the shear panel at the bottom as you had in C43 as well. We've got rear axle steering for the first ever time in a C63 of up to 2.5 degrees, which of course is gonna help massively as well. And then in terms of your suspension itself, it's pretty similar to C43, but again, everything's been upgraded again. So you've got your four-link front and your multi-link rear. You've got your AMG adaptive suspension, but the dampening systems here, though similar in their size, have all been redone inside. All the elastic kinematics have been redone. 
This is a much more advanced dampening system compared to your traditional ones. It's more oil-based and thus it's actually able to handle the bumps a lot better and give, give you more contact between tire and road. So this is going to be pretty impressive. Of course, you've got the dampening settings of Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus, as you always do. Then, of course, we have to come on to the exhaust system. Of course, you've got an AMG-specific system here. What's quite interesting is the use of microphones and speakers, not just on the inside, but on the outside as well. In order to get the real AMG sound, like I found in my SL55, they put speakers, for example, in the intakes and in other parts of the engine to pump that sound into the interior. So it's live, real AMG sound coming into the interior as well. So that should give you a presence of an engine that's kind of always there and you're, you're getting that amplified. What's interesting is they've also put loudspeakers on the car on the outside for the EV mode. And those sometimes also make use of that engine sound, which I didn't realize. EV mode has its own sounds for turning on, turning off and while driving for pedestrian safety. And it actually sounds pretty cool because it's using stuff from like EQE 53, EQS 53, etc. So you get EV sound and you get the combustion sound. What is that going to sound like? I did a Q&A on Instagram to ask you guys, what do you want to know about the new C63? And apart from the Saki comments and other stuff about price, there was, I would say, 80% comments asking about the sound. And that's the one thing I'm not allowed to tell you about because it's not finished yet. So I'm really sorry. That's something to look forward to in the future though, right? So there you go. That is the basis of your new C63, 680 brake horsepower, shit tons done for rigidity, a formatic all-wheel drive system with the drift mode as well. What's it going to handle like? What's it going to sound like? All of this for the future. I think it looks great. I would have liked to have seen some center locking wheel options though. I think they missed a trick on that. It looks 243 to me. It's a bit of a shame. Where else are you going to see this system in the future? Probably in the CLE. Um, you can catch my video that talks about all of the cars of AMG's future that I recently put on the channel. So do check that out and you'll get a glimpse of the future of what I think this company is going to look like. Now let me quickly show you the boot space before we check out the wagon. Now we only have a few bags in here, but look how much room does that battery take? That's not going to work for us, is it? I don't know what the literage is yet, but the wagon is better and I'm going to show you that now. So guys, here is your C63S wagon. It looks fabulous in Magno Graphite Grey. Same shade, in fact, that I have on my GT Black series. But on saloons and wagons, this just really kicks off, doesn't it? Look at that. That is gorgeous. It properly looks very much like the GT four-door, doesn't it? Really aggressive. The bonnet is incredible. Look at this. You get the power domes. And my favorite bit on the design on the front, which is this air outlet, which is functional. It is functional, releases heat from the engine. Of course, you get the standard AMG grille, as you always do. Much more interesting than that is the massive jet wing design on the front air intakes here. You've got active panels that you can see underneath there and in there behind the grille to manage air. So all of this really, really exciting looking on the front. We come around the side and it's fairly standard Mercedes wagon fare, which is flipping gorgeous, to be honest, because they make some of the best wagons in the world and this is no exception massive 20 20 inch wheel setup if you haven't had on c63 before so that looks great the wing here you can see turbo e performance with a gt63 style uh, badge there and then our rear which is what the wagon is all about so aggressive look at that what a thing i know it hasn't got the arches of the uh, m3 touring which looks amazing but it still looks so, so aggressive, doesn't it? Look at this thing. It looks mega. I think it looks a lot better than the saloon, actually. You've got the aggressive diffuser on the back with the ribbed chrome pipes, which look amazing. I like the fact that we've got silver badging and silver wheels on this. I think it really suits it. I just think that looks amazing. It's great that the performance hasn't changed either. Let's take a look inside the boot as well, where you find a bit more space because the saloon is quite compromised, actually, in terms of its boot space. Because of the battery, which you still see there, you know, you lose quite a lot. I can't see why you just wouldn't get the wagon if you're gonna buy one of these. It's just a much better idea. Yes, you've lost that, but you gain all of this here instead. You've got the split folding element of, of course as well on both sides. Of course, you can remove this, which is fine. And then you get that much more boot space, which is great. For me, I think you have to get the wagon with C63 if you're serious about luggage space, because the other car just isn't gonna afford you what you need. Here, of course, we have the charging, which can you imagine? 
in the C63. What's going on? What's happened to the world? Now, as far as the interior, it's actually identical to the C43 I've reviewed three times for you now. Check those videos for an in-depth look. We've got the lovely AMG performance seats, as always, which look amazing, just as we saw in the C43. And the same type of leather trim style, which is unique to the AMG models, but basically same as C43. Maybe the C63 will have more trim options, but we'll have to see later. Really spacious in the rear. You've got the lovely double panoramic roof up here as well, as you can see, which is great. Lots of leg space, lots of head space. Very similar, I think, to 205 actually. But like I said, I can't see why you wouldn't just get this. I think the saloon, particularly in the C63, is more compromised. Whereas the wagon looks better, more space in the back and more headroom for your passengers as well. In the wagon now, and we can see the screens are the same design. But here's a unique thing, look, EV mode. In the C63, what time to be alive. All your other usual mode select, etc. Like I said, this is pretty much identical to C43. You can customize all of this. Comfort, sport, sport plus, race, all the usual stuff. We'll go through what all of that means in the future. So guys, that's your C63S e-performance. Up next for C63 will be the co-drive, so keep an eye out for that. So if you've enjoyed this episode of RBR, please do like and subscribe. Lots more C63S content coming in the future. Some really important stuff. So I'll see you next time.